I've been interested in health and longevity for 12 years since I finished high school. I've read thousands of studies and I've written several books about this topic. I've managed to optimize my biomarkers as shown by many tests. For example, my epigenetic organ test shows my organs are 17 years old and my liver is in the health of a 9 year old. And I've also achieved elite level VO2 max and muscle mass for my age group. In this video, I'm going to share with you the most important lessons about health and longevity that I've learned. So make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Number one, longevity is about extending health span. A lot of people start getting various chronic diseases very early in life. In their 50s and 60s, they might be diagnosed with hypertension or heart disease that ends up shortening their life by decades. The centenarians who live to 100 get the same diseases as everyone else, but they get them 10 to 20 years later. So living longer mostly comes down to avoiding the chronic diseases that would kill you prematurely. I call this phenomenon the longevity leap, which is also the title of my new book. You postpone the chronic diseases that will kill you with a preventive lifestyle because preventive Prevention is much more effective than treatment. And you also try to slow down the speed of biological aging because getting older is the biggest risk factor for a lot of these chronic diseases. And the younger you are, the higher your life expectancy is going to be. This can also be called extending your health span, extending the amount of healthy years in your life. Because if you're healthy and young, then your risk of getting chronic diseases is very low. It's reasonable to say that focusing on your health span will also extend your lifespan because healthy people will live longer. And it's also a much more rational and smarter way to think about it because we don't necessarily know how to extend your lifespan, but we certainly have a lot of information about extending your health span. The centenarians achieve this effortlessly because of their genetics. The longest living people in history don't have any secret biohacking routine and they're not taking any supplements. They just have good genetics that work through reducing the risk of heart disease, neurodegeneration or slow down their speed of aging. Us mere mortals, we have to be much more diligent and careful with our lifestyle. I don't have any good longevity genetics. My grandfather died to cancer when he was 36 and I don't know anyone in my family who has lived past 80. So cancer and heart disease run in my family. I have to be much more more careful and I have to take preventive health much more seriously than someone who has good genetics. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. I've written a behemoth of a book about this exact topic called The Longevity Leap, and it contains over 7,000 references to scientific studies on preventive health, longevity, and the biology of aging. The book is now available and you can order it from the link in the description. Number two, exercise is king. When it comes to any intervention or therapeutic, then there's nothing as powerful as regular exercise for longevity. It targets all the hallmarks of biological aging while improving the functioning of all organ systems. Exercise improves your heart function, reducing the risk of heart disease. Exercise protects your brain against neurodegeneration. Exercise strengthens your bones, protecting against frailty. And exercise increases the expression of genes that slow down the speed of biological aging. I've spent years researching and reading about life extension and longevity and Trust me when I say that, there's nothing as powerful as exercise, in humans at least. There's currently no supplement or pharmaceutical that is going to extend your lifespan as much as exercise would. That's unfortunate because it kind of shows the disappointing results of supplements, but it's also actually a good thing because exercise is relatively simple. It's easy to understand. Of course, it might not be easy to implement, but it's easy to understand as a concept and it is proven to be the most effective thing for your longevity. So there's no magic about it. If you exercise at least three times a week for 45 to 60 minutes, you'll be ahead of most other people. But the evidence suggests that the more moderate intensity physical activity you do, the better off you would be. This includes hiking, brisk walking, cycling, jogging, gardening, yoga, etc. I've outlined the optimal way to exercise in what amounts in my previous video. It's called my evidence-based workout routine. Number three, focus on blood work. Your health is most accurately reflected by your blood work because it reflects your inner health and your biological age. It's the most important way to know if you're at a high risk of developing some sort of a chronic disease. A lot of people like to focus on the diet and the foods that they eat without even thinking about their blood work, which is a mistake in my opinion. Between any kind of a food that you eat and a particular chronic disease like heart disease or diabetes, there's a biomarker that actually causes the chronic disease to develop, not the food. The food can influence the biomarker and then lead you in the direction of the chronic disease, but the actual biomarker is what matters. For example, chronically high blood sugar and elevated triglycerides promote type 2 diabetes through insulin resistance and visceral fat accumulation. If your blood sugar is high for a day, you're not diabetic and it's not 
not a big deal. If your blood sugar is high for years, then you will develop diabetes and all the other complications related to that, such as retinopathy, central obesity, and heart disease. The food also matters much less because a lot of people might react differently to different foods. Not everyone who eats sugar gets diabetes, and not everyone who eats sugar has high blood sugar levels. Someone eating no sugar might also have high blood sugar levels and still develop into diabetes. Virtually everyone who has chronically elevated blood sugar for whatever reason or chronically elevated triglycerides will eventually develop diabetes. Sometimes it's genetic, sometimes it's related to physical activity, sometimes it's related to calorie intake and obesity. So there's many things that actually affect you getting a particular chronic disease besides the food. And the food causing that is mediated through a set of biomarkers. That's why it's important to measure your biomarkers and blood work to know how healthy you really are. Here are the top biomarkers to measure at least once a year or every other two years. Hemoglobin A1c and fasting insulin. Lipid panel that includes cholesterol, triglycerides and ApoB. HSCRP for inflammation. Liver enzymes like ALT, ASD, GDT and ALP. Albumin, complete blood count. Kidney function like cystatin C, EGFR, BUN and sodium. Vitamin D3. Sex hormones like testosterone, DHEA and estradiol. Homocysteine. This is not a comprehensive list, but it covers the most important markers for the main chronic diseases. Number four, don't neglect recovery. Longevity isn't a sprint and it's actually not even a marathon. You should actually think of longevity as like a long hike through Europe or some other region. You're traveling, you know, days and months and years. Exercise and various stressors such as intermittent fasting and sauna can be good for you, but they can still tax your body. I know many people who have suboptimal blood work or body composition because they're too stressed, they're not sleeping enough, or they're overtraining. I'm as meticulous about my downtime as I am with my exercise and work. I get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I take a nap if I have to. I don't overdo the caffeine. I don't overexercise. I spend time with friends and family and I just chill out every day. If you want to play the long game, then you have to let your body recover. This is a lesson that I've learned the hard way as well, because in the past I haven't taken sleep that seriously. For example, back in university, I did a crazy polyphasic sleep schedule where I slept about three hours at night and I had three 20 minute naps throughout the day. Looking back, it you know was stupid. It didn't help my health at all. But I do think that it made me realize the importance of sleep because I was somewhat tired. Number five, diet matters, but not as much as you think. This harps on my previous point about blood work. Your inner health isn't reflected by what foods you eat. It's reflected by your biomarkers. Yes, the foods can influence your biomarkers, but the biomarkers are actually the final outcome. What I mean by that is that there are many diets and foods that can keep your blood markers optimal and in the low risk category. You could be eating the perfect whole food organic unprocessed food diet, but if your blood sugar or inflammation is high, then you're still at increased risk of diabetes. And likewise, if you're eating a more suboptimal diet, but your blood sugar and inflammation are normal, then you're not at an increased risk of diabetes. There's no monopoly on a special diet that is good for longevity. Yes, certain dietary patterns tend to result in better blood work and better outcomes when it comes to chronic disease and some other dietary patterns are associated with increased risk. But it's never a conclusive answer. If you eat this food, you're going to get cancer or something like that. That's why I realized that you need to get your diet right only about 80% and you're going to maximize the benefits from that. Here are the main points that you want to keep in mind with diet. Number one, strive for normal body weight. The truth is that for optimal health, you need to maintain a normal body fat percentage. For men, it's below 15% and for women, 17 to 30%. Diet and whatever foods you're eating are secondary to your body composition and your body fat percentage because being overweight is much worse for you than any junk food. Yes, junk food increases your risk of obesity, but being overweight is significantly worse for your health than eating a piece of McDonald's. You eat food only a few times a day, but if you're overweight, then you're carrying that extra weight with you 24-7. Number two, calories matter a lot. Food quality is secondary to food quantity. If you eat quote-unquote healthy foods, but you carry 10 to 20 kilos of extra weight, then you're still harming your health and you're shortening your lifespan. Likewise, if you eat foods that are considered less healthy, but you're fit, lean and with optimal biomarkers, then you're healthier than the person who is eating only clean foods, but they're overweight. That's just how biology works. Your biomarkers are what actually mediate the risk of a chronic disease. And lastly, number three, try to eat 80% of your food as whole foods with minimal processing. This heuristic tends to result in you 
losing weight and eating slightly fewer calories. You'll also be covering all your vitamins and minerals this way. However, your diet doesn't have to be 100% perfect. If it's 80% decent, then you're getting all the benefits. And diet is also somewhat individual. I've tried high carb, low carb, many different diets. Some people do better on a low carb diet. Some people do better on a high carb diet. There are physiological differences as well as psychological differences. Some people just have a taste preference for low carb, saltier or fattier meals. So they'll do better on a low carb diet. Other people have a taste preference for somewhat sweeter foods. So they'll do better on a high carb diet. These are just physiological and psychological differences between people. So they'll do better on different types of diets. And at the end of the day, what matters is the biomarker. Doesn't matter what diet you follow, you need to keep your biomarkers optimal. That's what matters. Last as a bonus, I also decided to talk about some supplements that I've learned about. I've researched about supplements for many years. And to be honest, most of them don't work or they don't have very limited evidence. So here is a list of the supplements that definitely have quite compelling amounts of evidence. Number one, creatine is the best sports performance supplement, but it also has benefits on the brain, sleep, methylation, bones, and even fat loss. Number two, collagen peptides have a lot of clinical trials showing they help to reverse skin aging and wrinkles. Number three, omega-3s are something most people aren't getting enough of, and higher blood omega-3 levels are linked to reduced risk of heart disease, Alzheimer's, and mortality. And number four, magnesium is a master mineral most people are deficient in, and low magnesium status increases your risk of heart disease and diabetes. Again, this is not a inclusive list, but it's certainly evidence-based. Overall, these are the most important lessons about health I want you to understand. They might sound somewhat basic and like very fundamental, which is true, but it also highlights the importance of the fundamentals. A lot of people might understand peripherally that exercise is important and you shouldn't be overweight or something like that, but they don't fully grasp the idea because, you know, if you're somewhat suboptimal in any aspect of your health, then it means that you don't really fully embrace these fundamentals, such as exercise, diet, sleep, and blood work. If you're feeling that you're lacking in any aspect of your health, then go look at the fundamentals. Look at the fundamentals and try to improve them. Then you fully actually understand these principles. My new book, The Longevity Leap, goes into all of this in great detail and much more. It contains 24 chapters ranging from the biology of aging to all the major chronic diseases such as heart disease, kidney disease, neurodegeneration, and I also cover over 70 clinically relevant biomarkers for chronic diseases and their optimal ranges. You can get the book from the link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.